All right, good morning, everybody. It's still two minutes, but then I have to say good afternoon. But good morning. We are glad you are here for the memorial service for Earl and uh, Earl Amos Bage. So uh, that's a pretty good size handle, isn't it? And uh, we're thankful for you being here today and uh, for the family, especially. And uh, what a blessing it is to know this family. And uh, the longer I'm in this area, the longer and the more people I know. And you know, a lot of nice folks in Florida. And a pretty nice one from Houston, too. He's, he agreed. All right, we're going to stand up, stand up if you would. Ray's already standing. Stand up and turn to number 67 in your songbook. Number 67, what a day that will be. Sing with me. Page number 67. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day, that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. There will be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear. No more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day, that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day, that will be. All right, thank you. You may be seated. Now, if I... Make a mistake on the eulogy, we'll redo it and uh, do it again later on during the service. But Earl Amos Bage was born on February 15, 1925, Jefferson, Missouri. He passed, he went to be with the Lord on October the 8th, 2018. And when Myrna called me, I was so excited. She said, Earl's in heaven. What a blessing, huh? To know Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. He has one sister, Irma. And uh, he was an Army veteran. You can tell by looking at the picture. And I think he's got something to say. It just looks like he's ready to tell Ray something. I don't know what it is. But I got a pretty good idea. And he is retired from General Electric. And uh, the last time I saw, saw Earl before he we went to heaven was last Sunday afternoon. And uh, he uh, was not really that alert but he heard my voice and he said, Pastor Jim. Wow. And I was holding his hand and he squeezed it. He just let me know he could hear. He wasn't able to communicate well, but he could hear. And uh, as I was looking, looking at him and talking to him, I said, we was time for us to leave. And I said, brother, I love you. And he said, I said, I'll see you later on. And he squeezed my hand again. Wow. What a blessing it is to have friends and family who are children of God. Wow. Well, that's about all I know about Earl. I didn't know him very long. How long have you been coming here? Four months? Three months? Six months? And since May, okay. Well, you can learn a lot about people from May to October, can't you? It's almost, October's almost over. And so what a, what a blessing it is to have church family. And, uh, well, you, just, uh, you can lean on them. You can depend on them. And I got a lot of things I had prepared to say for my message, but uh, we'll see what comes out because I think my wife took my notes. And uh, she does that once in a while just to see what I'll do. 
That ever happened to you, Ray? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, we're going to sit down for the next song. Oh, that's for me. Number 45 in your songbook. Number 45. I think I know this one. It, seems, it looks familiar. Number 45. If you can't sing good enough, we'll have to have you stand up, all right? I'm looking. 45. Here we go. On the happy golden shore Where the faithful part no more When the storms of life are over Meet me there When the night dissolves away Into pure and perfect day I am going home to stay Meet me there Meet me there Meet me there Where the tree of life is blooming Meet me there the storms of life are o'er, and of the big golden shore, where the faithful part no more, meet me there, verse 2. Here upon us hopes are vain, dearest links are rent in twain, but in heaven though the return be there, by the river sparkling bright, in the city of delight. Where our faith is lost in sight, meet me there, meet me there, meet me there. Where the tree of life is blooming, meet me there. When the storms of life are o'er on that happy golden shore, where the faithful park no more, meet me there, verse 3. Where the harps of angels ring And the bliss forever sing In that palace of the king Meet me there Where in sweet communion blend Heart with heart and friend with friend In a world that never shall end Meet me there Meet me there Meet me there Meet me there on the happy golden shore where the faithful part no more. Meet me there. Meet me there. Thank you, Frank. You smoothed that out for me. I left a few words out. You want me to sing them for you? No, James says no. Okay. Oh. Uh, we have one more congregational song, and then we have a special by Sp Sarah and Katie. Is that right? Okay. So let's stand again, lest you get too warm. It's warm in here today, don't you think? No? Okay. A yes and a no. No, two no's. I guess the no's win again. No, oh, Angie's with me. Yes, that's, t that's a tie. All right, hymn number 40. Hymn number 40 in your hymn book. The Sweet By and By. Hymn number 40. Hymn number 40. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar, for the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore we shall sing on that beautiful shore the melodious songs of the blessed and our spirit shall sorrow no more not a sigh for the blessing of rest in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore on the sweet by and by we shall meet 
on that beautiful shore. Verse number three. To our bountiful Father above, we will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His love and the blessings that hallow our days. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. All right, thank you. You may be seated. All right, ladies are coming. I'm looking at my sheet. I don't have it memorized yet. Tomorrow. I'd like to turn to John chapter 14. I'll start there in just a minute or two. John chapter 14. The 
Well, here he comes. As I think about everybody in this room, we all have different needs, don't we? We all have one thing in common that we knew Earl. And Earl is okay. Amen. He's okay. He's, yeah. he's better than okay. Amen. He is absent from the body and present with the Lord. Yes. Think about that just for a moment. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Just like that. Yes. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. One day, that's going to be us. Absent from the body, present with the Lord, either through death or through the rapture of the church. So as I, I think about absent from the body, present with the Lord, and uh, I, John chapter 14 says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Now Earl's living in a condo in Lehigh. Now he's in a mansion. What a change, huh? What a change. Isn't God so good to us? He is so good to us. That absent from the body is to be present with him. God is there. Jesus is there. Many people we know are there. Yes. Now that will help us to remember the focus that we have today. The focus we have today, is it on the Lord? Is it on the Word of God? Is it on someone else or something else? There's nothing wrong with focusing on things and people. That, that's okay. But we need to have our main focus. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So heaven are for those who we have loved, and they're there now. Now my mother is there, my father is there, my grandma was there, my grandpa is not there. My grandpa was a cult worshiper. He was a Jehovah Witness. And he would not listen to me for nothing. I got saved at nine years old. First thing I wanted to do is go home and tell my dad, and he told me to get going. Then I went to tell my grandpa, and he told me to get going. Huh. And you're probably thinking, well, you're so likable. Why did they do that to you? It's because they knew they were doing something wrong. People don't like to be confronted when they're doing something wrong. If you haven't noticed that yet, you will before your, your life is over. So I, I was thinking this afternoon or this morning and whenever it was, late last night, absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. What a blessing. What a blessing. You see this? I think it was Levi coming. He said, you got a boo-boo. I said, yeah, I got a boo-boo. I fall down once in a while. I don't like to fall face first, but uh, the last two times I have. <laughs> My wife's going to say, absent from the body, present with the Lord. He's gone this time. He, he done knocked his head off. <laughs> that was pretty bad English, though. I'm sorry. Let, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. So boy, we have, what a future we have, folks. What a future we have to be with the Lord. What a future we have to have a mansion in heaven. And I've never lived in a mansion. I don't know about any of you, but I've had some pretty nice places, but uh, I don't think I ever lived in a mansion. But uh, someday I'm going to have one. And there's a good description of that in Revelation chapter 20, 21, 22 in that area. It talks about the, the heavenly home. Uh, that's where our loved ones are at. I say my mom's there, my dad's there. I have a set of twin brothers and sisters that are there that my mother had. She lost. And then another single uh, boy. And uh, so there's three of my brothers or sisters in heaven right now. And one day, absent from the body, present with the Lord, I'm going to be there. I'm going to get to see him. I'm going to get to meet him. And I can't hardly wait. And uh, you know what it's like growing up as an only child? People say they're spoiled. I believe that. I was definitely spoiled. Now, the only thing my dad required of me was to buy my own car. So I picked strawberries and pulled weeds for two summers to get up enough time money. I had $50 to buy me a car. Oh, it was a nice one. It was a 55 Chevy, and if I had it right now, it would be worth $30,000. But setting all that aside, as we look at heaven, and we're absent from the body, present with the Lord, say, yeah, Pastor, you already said that. But here's something else. We will have a glorified body. Amen. This body will have no pain. This body will have no excess anything. If we, the cholesterol on it right now is 263, and 
the glorified body is going to take that down. A 263 is way too high. And, uh, and my doctor said, okay, you got to get that off of there. And I said, okay. And he, so he's got this plan. He's got this method. He has you come to these doctor's office every other week and $251. <laughs> I said, that's the plan. I said, well, you told me if I lost weight, I would not have high cholesterol. And he said, that's true. And I said, well, how come it went up then? Oh, I lost almost 50 pounds. But as I think about heaven, it's a place to rejoice. But you know, so is our church. So is our home. So is our car. You know, sometimes it's hard to rejoice in the car because somebody just cut you off or whatever might have happened. But as I think about rejoicing and there's going to be praise, there's going to be singing, there's going to be worship in heaven, what a privileged people we are as believers in Christ. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, Therefore, if any man or any woman be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. And I've had dozens of people tell me, Yes, I would like to get saved, but I can't give up this, this, or that. Well, why not? Do you want to trust Jesus as your Savior? New creature in Christ? Old things are passed away. The moment you trust Christ as your Savior, you won't want what you're doing. It'll just be gone. That desire will be gone. So there's going to be rejoicing. There's going to be praise. There's going to be singing. There's going to be worship. New creatures in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And then over in the book of Ephesians, uh, verse number 8 and 9 of chapter 2, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith. Does anybody know where sin came from? Do you remember a guy back in the book of Genesis? His name was Adam. And because of his sin, everybody that was born after him has a sin nature. Whoa. That's a lot of people in it. Boy, so we can blame it on him. Well, we can for a moment, but then the Lord will remind us of verses that will help us to be born again. Help us to know for sure if we die today, we're going to go to heaven. Now, I'm positively sure that Errol Beige is in heaven right now at this time. Mary recorded him praying and asking God to save him. Amen. Wow. So there are new creatures in Christ. But because of the sin... It says in the Romans, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. And, and later on in the book of uh, uh, Romans, it talk, talks about if we'll just call out unto the Lord. For whosoever shall call unto the, unto the Lord will be saved or shall be saved. So we're new creatures. We are absent from the body, present with the Lord someday. Not today, but someday. There's a great need in America today for people to be born again to be saved for by grace are you saved through faith I'll finish that now and that not of yourselves you can't do anything to save yourself it's all God it's all from the word of God not of works lest any man should boast you know if I could save myself or if I could save somebody else I'd just go around bragging about it all the time and that's the way we are but because the way God set it up he said for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So as I think about this morning, I think about what, what would Earl want us to hear? What would Earl want us to know? He would want everybody in this room to know exactly what he did, how he was not a saved person. He was sick. He was laying in bed. And that gave him time to think about who and what was really going on in his life. And he woke up one day and he told Myrna and she was talking to him. He said, I just need to be saved. And that's just how easy it is for people to say, Lord, I want you to save me. Lord, would you please forgive me of my sin? Lord, would you please help me? But sometimes we are so proudful that we would never do that. We are so full of ourselves that we don't have room for God. Well, that's a sad commentary for Christianity Day, for the unsaved community today. So as I think about absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I see great comfort, great hope, great peace for everybody that's here because of what God has, because of his word. And we can rely on it. We can depend on it. We can trust it. We can have full confidence in the word of God and his ability to take care of us. Now sometimes I don't take too good care of myself because I get banged up. 
I had to go to the foot doctor this week. You know what they call them? They're toe divers. I said, huh. He said, I thought you were toeologists. He said, no. That's a, what is that, a Latin word or something? Toe divers. That means ankle or foot. Well, I was out, I was out running the weed eater and I come in and toenail on my big toes. Gone. So I had to go to the doctor. He said, I'm going to put that back on. I said, oh, no, you're not. I said, you just leave it alone. I just came here to get some medicine for it. So anyhow, why did I say that? Oh, because of trust. I have to trust God a lot. The older I get, the more clumsier I get. None of you know that. This lady over here smiling. Are you all clumsy? Never mind, huh? <laughs> this pastor gets in trouble a lot. When Earl quits laughing, I say, let's pray. We're, we're done. <laughs> Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Are you easily offended? Some people are. doesn't take much. Well, I got offended over there at that church, and I can't go back because I, can't, I, can't just, I just can't take it. Well, you'll never be offended here unless the Bible, the Word of God, or the conviction of the Holy Spirit does it. It won't be me. It won't be anybody else here. So in Psalm 23 is one of my favorite psalms. We're not going to read it this morning. But if you read through Psalms 23, notice the words, I, my, and me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He's my shepherd. He's your shepherd. He's exactly what we need. He's the one that's going to lead us and guide us and protect us along the way. As I have a devotion for the Word of God, I love the Bible. I love it more every day. And I find peace and hope in the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4 especially. And then it talks a bit, a little bit later on in, in, uh, in Romans, it talk, not Romans, but in, in uh, 1 Corinthians and over in 1 Thessalonians, that we have a glorified body coming up. Coming up. It won't be long. It won't be long. Uh, I want to take just a couple of minutes to... Give us more encouragement. Give us more hope in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. Amen. Has anybody ever called you ignorant without getting a black eye or something? Here Paul said to the church of Thessalonica, verse 13 of chapter 4, but I would not have you to be ignorant brethren. Huh. That means they didn't know what was really going on. And he was going to try to help them. He said, I, 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 would not, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. The, 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 there was a false teacher in that church. And they were teaching that when people die, they go somewhere else besides heaven. It's hard to tell what that false person was teaching. But he said, concerning them which are asleep, that means dead. And dead in Christ. There's nothing any better to be dead in Christ than to be alive in Christ. And he says, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which also sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. There's that glorified body thing again. He said, will he bring with him? This is talking about the rapture of the church. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or go before them which are asleep. So get this picture. One day the Lord is going to come in the clouds. We don't know when it's going to be. It says in the book of Matthew and the book of Mark, nobody knows the time, nobody knows the day, nobody knows the hour except God himself. Amen. He said, okay, I'm going to come in the air, but the dead in Christ, that would be Earl, one of them, with multitudes of others, the dead in Christ will rise first to meet the Lord in the air. What a wonderful picture that is. Just think about the, 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 the air traffic controllers. They're going to have to shut all the airports down because the sky is going to be full of people. Wow. But as, as he looks at that, as I look at that, I believe that Jesus died on the cross, don't you? He was buried, and he was resurrected from the grave. He arose. But in, in, in uh, this, this passage of Scripture, it said the dead in Christ will rise first. And it says for, uh, where's it at? 
Verse 15, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, that's us today. If you're a child of God, you're in that category today. If you're not a child of God, you're going to go to a different place besides heaven. That's called hell. I don't see any choice, I don't see any option for anybody not being saved and asking Jesus Christ to save them. Right. I really don't. Yeah, well, you're the pastor. Well, that's true. But I still don't see any reason. Then we, you which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Wow. So the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Now Jesus could come today. Jesus could come during this service. He could come tomorrow. We don't know when he's going to come. But my encouragement to you today is to be ready when he does come. Amen. That which, the, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. The clouds of people, the clouds that are here. So one day, we're just going to be gone. Are there going to be people left? Yes. Anybody who does not know Jesus as their personal Savior will stay here. And then later on, there's going to be a seven-year tribulation period with great torment. Great torment. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. These are words of comfort for me. And if you're a child of God, I'm not another comfort for you too because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So wherefore, comfort. Encourage one another with these words. We are so privileged to have the Bible to have the Word of God, to show us how to go to heaven, to show us why we need to go to heaven, to show us what's going to happen when we do go to heaven. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Someone first, some person said, well, it's clouds of people. Well, I hope so. I hope so. Clouds of people. My little great-grandson took the challenge of his daddy. His daddy's a pastor in Bakersfield, California. And his goal was to pass out 10,000 tracts in October and November. And little Carter, he's about this tall, five years old, he had him a big old bundle of tracts. And he was running. He was in a subdivision like, what's the one way out there, Mirror Verde? And he was going from house to house, passing them out. He said, Dad, I almost got him. He had a handful. He almost had a handful. He didn't have 10,000. But he was sowing seed. You know that in California there's a lot of unsaved people, just like there is in LaBelle and Lehigh. Right. People who don't know Jesus. But the Lord is patient and long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. So there is comfort, there is strength, there is encouragement from the Word of God. He has given us grace, for by grace are you saved through faith, and not, not of yourselves. There's nothing I can do to be saved myself. But after I get saved, I can be right with God as much as possible. And I wrote on the top of one of my, uh, one of my passages that I'm it's somewhere else right now. But after we are new creatures in Christ, everything changes about us. Every action we have is different because we are trying to follow Jesus' example to make him first place in our life. For by grace are you saved. And that... And not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, lest any man should boast. Now, I have total confidence in God. I have total confidence in the Word of God that the Word of God is exactly what our country needs. The Word of God is exactly what you need today. You say, well, Pastor, I am saved, but are you living for the Lord? Are you dedicated to God? Are you committed to Him? Now, Earl didn't have time to learn all these things, but he's experiencing them now. He's experiencing them now. And I am so excited to meet him another time. And that's what I told him in the, in the hospice. I'll see you later on. And I, I will. I'm going to see my mom and my dad, my brothers, my sisters, my grandma. Not my grandpa. Not my grandpa. You talk about a hard-hearted person. But there are a lot of hard-hearted persons in the world today. They think, well, I can do it myself. And that's what my grandpa thought. That's what my grandpa thought. Well, we have such a privilege to be here today to 
celebrate, I guess we could say, to go, the home going of our own. He's in heaven. We're here. We got a lot to do while we're still here. If you want to be encouraged, just look at that picture. And I don't know if everybody got one of these. You need to get one of these when you go out. Earl Amos Beige. He says, miss me, but let me go. Because he's not here. We are going to miss him. Myrna's going to miss him the most. She's been a lot of time with him. I just had four or five months. Wow. If you're here this morning and you want to be saved, I wish you'd talk to me or one of the men in the church or the ladies in the church to show you from the Word of God. I showed you basically how to be saved, how to know for sure if you're going to go to heaven. That's a very serious thing in our lives today, and we should not take it lightly because opportunity after opportunity after opportunity comes up, but don't let this be the last, especially if you reject. Would you stand with me, please? We're going to sing. Uh, Frank's going to pick me out a song. 282, I think, will be a good one in your songbook. Two hundred and eighty-two. Thanks again for coming, folks. Appreciate you. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Verse 5, just as I am, thou wilt receive Wilt welcome, part and cleanse, relief, because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Thank you again for being here. We're going to have a lunch in just a few moments. I'm assuming the ladies are almost ready. Or very close, and we're going to dismiss after I pray, and I'm going to ask Myrna and uh, James to come right up here, and the people can reach you on the way back to the lunchroom, and uh, they'll probably want to tell you how sorry they are, and I certainly am also. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for the food we're about to eat. We ask you a blessing. Lord, thank you for the Word of God, how it speaks to each of our hearts, even in different ways. But Lord, we just ask you would take it and use it and make it work for the needs of each person in this room. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if Myrna and James will come, come, then you folks can just come down the middle and go out the side back to the dining hall.